Hello everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life. It is mail call time from Spinatix all the way from the US of A. And this should be the DNA Splice Spinner. So let's just crack this box open and see what exactly is in store. This looks to be a DNA style button. And then we have a very nice Spinatix sticker. I got a lot of these and these are just awesome because they are waterproof, you know, this super high quality. And of course we have a business card, but here it is, this signature DNA box. And this sticker denotes that I ordered this in stainless steel. While the DNA splice is also offered in titanium, you guys know I love stainless steel too much, so I hopped on that pre-order. So let's flip this box open. Oh, nice, we've got another DNA sticker. This is awesome, wow. Wow. Okay, I gotta control myself. I'm really excited to pull out this slice. But anyway, we have a bearing removal tool. Got the DNA logo on the front and back. And then we have an extra bearing. This here is a stainless steel bearing and in there should be an SBV2 bearing. So yep, it comes with two bearings. And yes, it has a spare set of buttons and these are known as the Kepler soap buttons. But the difference is that one of these are regular fit and the other is the new Unifit system style buttons. And the Unifit system, well, I believe this is the Unifit style button. Let's just take out the button from the package and you guys see that? See those washers there? That is the Unifit system. So this is Spinetic's answer to creating buttons that will fit on both press fit style spinners as well as spinners with the bearing retention system. So that is really wonderful. The thing I want to mention about these buttons is that they are made of two different metals. The outer lip or the main button itself is made of titanium and the inlay is stainless steel. That's because this combination comes with the stainless steel version of the splice. Now, if you ordered or purchased a titanium splice, then you would get a button of the opposite combination, meaning that the outside would be stainless steel with a titanium inlay. Take note of that. Wow, I am excited because I I've been waiting for this for so long, I'm getting like non-stop skingasms here guys. Everyone, this is the DNA splice. Look at that, wow, this is... <sighs> man! Man, oh man, oh man. You guys see that? That's crazy. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put the box aside. And I got DNA buttons, thank you Josh. That's a nice extra little gift that you put in. It's sneaky sneaky. Anyway, here is the DNA splice, everyone. It feels so much heftier than I thought it would. This weighs in at 70 grams. I've already checked the website. Stainless steel's at 70 grams, but titanium is a little bit lighter at 48.3 grams. So I'm just gonna round it down, say it's 48 grams. 48 is gonna be a little bit too light for me. Wait a minute, this. Wow, this, this feels good. What in the world? Okay guys, right off the bat, this area right here, there's some crazy texture. What? That is mad. You feel the steps, and they're not sharp by the way, you just feel the steps going upward. It's not sharp at all. And then you have this edge right here, and it's rounded on the top. This is nice. Dude, I'm really, my goodness, this is really non-stop skingasms, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. Well, the aesthetics of the spinner, you can see that it's brush finish and it looks like Kepler's kind of brush finish because you can see that it's unevenly brushed at this area. See that? So the brush kind of becomes like a, I don't know, a powdery kind of finish. And then you have brush marks going this way, but out here you have brush marks going this way instead. So I don't really like that. I don't know if there's any way to get rid of that. See the brushing on the top here as well, on the edges, not so good. The problem is, I don't know if Polishing would actually kind of even these lines out because these lines are really exquisite. Uh, I gotta really think of a solution for this because I hate this. Like personally, I don't like this finish. I really, really don't like this kind of brushwork. I think, in my opinion, this is kind of slipshod. It shouldn't be this way. Ugh, it kind of irks me. But apart from that, guys, the overall shape. Now, if you look at the spinner this way, just flat on. This is just awesome. Really gives you kind of an illusion that there are two trits in here. And once again, guys, and these pointed arms very reminiscent of the triad or invictus where it's pointed but it is not sharp see it's rounded guys look at it it's rounded okay i'm gonna undo the buttons and check the bearing retention system aha these are sbv2s i don't even need to take it out it is an sbv2 just by looking at the race and everything and yes 100 trust for spinetics as well as damn designs and yes i didn't mention this earlier i wanted to keep it till now this is a collaboration between adrian de souza of damn designs as well as joshua of spinetics so this is a very 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 exciting offering that i have been waiting for let's give it a first spin here we go 
Man. Very nice. No wobble. No flutter. No jutter. Nothing. Just smoothness all around. But look at that reflection. That is crazy, guys. Look at that reflection. Man. Man, I don't know. Like, if I were to kind of polish this thing, I don't want to lose those lines, man. That's just... Like, this part is really irking the hell out of me. I hate this. I really hate this. Not only do I hate the way it looks, I hate the way it feels. But this part though, this is just... What? And... Oh man, this is really pissing me off because I know that I'm not able to polish this because I run the risk of losing all these very beautiful steps because these steps are just so narrow. Look at that. They're so precise and so thin that I think that if you're not careful, you're gonna just get rid of them. You're gonna smooth it out and I really don't want to do that. Ah. Uh, Spin is nice. The spin is really nice. Two-handed. Forward flicks are pretty okay. Not very satisfying. Let me try and get my finger here. Nah, not very satisfying. Probably because it's so angled. But preloaded flicks though. What? Okay, so it's kind of asymmetrical. I'm going to change the orientation. It's actually pretty comfortable. It's not bad actually, it's not bad. The buttons are like, kind of... I wish they had a more pronounced or deeper dish. Cause right now, the dish is very reminiscent of the original style Spinetics button. Which, you know, it's nothing wrong. Maybe because I'm kind of spoilt by choices right now. Like, look at this, like this. The DNA buttons, they have a much deeper dish. And this one is a lot more shallow. And of course everyone, a size comparison for you. This is a stubby versus the DNA splice. Wait, the lighting's not very good for this. Okay, I gotta put my finger here like that so you can see. So the splice is a lot taller than the stubby. Width-wise, it's about the same. But definitely feels a little bit more hefty than the stubby. Probably because, you know, it's got a bearing retention system and everything. But this actually feels nice. It feels nice. Feels good to hold. But of course, you know guys, these are just my first impressions. Right now, I'm on the fence. Like, it's good enough to make my hair stand. I will give that to the splice. But this finish here is, in my opinion, pretty darn obnoxious. This is the same kind of like powdery finish that was on my uh, Copper Origin that I ordered from Legacy. And then I was very disappointed with. Shoot, man. If I were to kind of stonewash this, I would have to polish this flat area because you could see some machining marks on the top. Guys, right now I'm nitpicking because I'm just so disappointed with this. Apart from that, it's a great spinner. I'll just put this on my EDC for the next week or so. And then I'll get back to everyone and let you all know what I really think about it. Because right now, I'm on the fence. I am on the fence, I gotta admit. One week later. I am now at Emma's place. Stopped by because one, I wanted to visit a family for Chinese New Year. And two, because it was time to collect those little clay pots that we actually made or the pottery things that we made. So here, I have that splice spinning and I'll talk about it in a short while. But anyway, this turned out way, way smaller than we expected. Like this is the flower vase or flower vase that Emma made. And it's super small. If you guys watch the pottery video, you, you'll notice that it was actually a lot bigger. So this is what she made as well. The other bowl that looks kind of like a big ash tray more than a bowl. But hers, like I mentioned, it's not glazed. So it's rough to the touch and it's a very matte kind of finish. Very clayish, but she went for a very smooth, rounded finish, as you guys can see. And this is mine. Well, this is supposedly my coffee mug, and I got this glazed before firing. So yeah, or I should say glazed during the firing. I don't know how it works, but yeah, it's a glazed finish. And this is now suitable for storing foods or like water or anything. But those that are not glazed, you're not you're not supposed to have it to contain any kind of food stuffs. But this is the final product, and the markings that I made did not turn out very nicely <laughs> but it does offer grip and that was initially what I was going for so I guess that kind of worked out but it is way smaller than I expected like I thought it would be bigger like a mug kind of but this is small it's like a coffee shop coffee cup kind of size or oh, maybe a slightly bigger yeah but definitely not the usual kind of size that I drink coffee from and this is the bowl that I made initially I wanted a big huge bowl to put my ramen noodles when I cooked it but this would barely hold a single packet not even a packet of indomie I think but you know it turned out pretty cool uh you know for a first time I think we did a pretty darn good job and I think it turned out nicely I already showed this to Emma via FaceTime and 
she was quite happy with it as well just she was also really surprised that it turned out way smaller than we thought and here here's the thing i am actually really really happy with the splice right now because no more of that dot finish see it's like super brushed now right it's shiny so no i didn't have to stone wash this nope the entirety of this part is left alone the way it was this part as well the top also i didn't do anything to the buttons nothing i just cleaned up this area and how i did it was really simple i basically just took a very high grit sandpaper talking about 1800 grit and i just followed the direction of the brush and lo and behold it just turned out beautifully like this is actually what i think it should have been in the first place so right now i'm not mad anymore i'm not frustrated i'm not sad i don't have to stone wash this thing i don't have to polish it this is great this is exactly what i wanted this looks really good and guys i gotta say man that that reflection those lines that's just it's just something else i'm happy with it now random update but still an update for this particular video one eternity later We're at Ikea and in Singapore a lot of people visit Ikea just to eat so I thought I would show this to you guys. I don't know how Ikea is overseas but this is it and the most popular dish here is the Swedish meatballs. So we have it in beef or chicken because people in certain religions are not allowed to eat beef so have a look. Only has the broccoli. Yeah, I was wondering why. Because it's meat also. Right? Looks like the rest are here. So let's see how popular meatballs are. Because at this table right now, there's oh, three. Oh wow! Wow! Are we monsters? Oh, they are really pure, like growing kids. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! They bought a lot of food. What is it? Chicken thigh. Okay, props to IKEA for providing spring rolls. That's just cool for offering it in the first place. Raspberry blueberry cheesecake. <laughs> Couscous with vegetable balls. <laughs> Clearly you could see that meatballs really are the most popular. This, this is mine. That's just one portion. I'm sharing some chicken wings, but the rest of them are having a feast. I'm having meatballs as a main dish, so it's when and meatball. But the rest are like, meatballs are just a side. Props to Kenji for staying true to the vegetarian game. Okay, I'm gonna try the vegetarian ball. Yeah. Vegan ball. I'm gonna try it for the first time in my life. I'll try it. I'll try it. Interesting taste, bro. The vegetarian balls. There's corn, there's peas. It's not bad. It's not bad. I think like as a kid, if I had problems eating vegetables, I would eat that. Yeah, that's not it. Bless you. <laughs> I thought you got it on camera. Yeah, I did. <laughs> cut you. Cut you. Dig your nose. Dig, dig your nose. about Ikea that I hate the most is that they force you to walk through Ikea just to get out. Like coming in is really easy, you just go up the escalator, turn around, head to the dining area. And now that we're done, it's like a maze to get out. I don't like this layout. I mean, it's a good strategy to force people to walk through this gigantic area, but then again, it's so, it's so troublesome. Let's see if I can find a way out. This trick is called slicing the nipple. One eternity later. I am back after spending a week with the splice. Let me tell you guys, I'm really, really really happy with it i know initially when i first recorded the video the impressions weren't that great because of the sides but now just look at this spinning ball of fire here that's what i'm talking about those lines are just 
gorgeous like those are some beautiful beautiful lines so yes i've really thoroughly enjoyed my experience with the splice and i i just want to talk to you guys about it while everything is all fresh in my mind here's another close look at it if you did not have one in the earlier part of the video you can see how well it is made and i did not do any other brushing to it i did not stone wash it i did not sand it down or anything except for this area and i'm gonna tell you guys this was really really easy i was like you know what i'm just gonna try it out and i did and i do not regret that decision it looks really good now it's really really smooth here and it's so comfortable when i rest my finger in there i did it for both sides it took me less than a minute on each and man i gotta tell you this is a very very fun fidgeter i do apologize because i did not take a spin time video but on the website and i'm talking about the spinetics website it is listed to be getting about five minutes on a two-handed table spin i will not contest what they wrote but i have to admit and confess to you guys that i did not take a spin time video because this thing is just like real fun like look at it like the way it's made i don't think it is designed to be meant for long spins so that's why i didn't even care at all but yes you could table spin it no problem you could get some really really nice cool spin effects and reflections like that look at that look at the way it just look at that reflection guys just this is really awesome i'm gonna slow it down a little bit more see even as you slow it down it's got different reflections see so cool it's like two layers of that lines you got one inner layer and the outer layer that is kind of like a little bit different see that guys come on ninja star much i like it i dig it a lot good job to joshua and adrian de souza of damn designs this is a really really wonderful spinner now the edges here are not sharp and like i said it's a really fun fidgeter because this notch here is super comfortable when you get your finger there it's like a perfect resting spot see perfect just perfect even for the fourth finger it's perfect when you change it up into an index finger and thumb grip also, same thing guys, it's really perfect right here. Push forwards, pull backs, not a problem at all. And also because of these, these large angled sides here, it is really comfortable when you want to perform preloaded flicks, just like that. Nice resting spot. I could start the preloaded flick from up here as well. And I could start it from the outer edge as well. Not an issue, it's just super fun, super comfortable and everything just feels kind of natural. If you guys are used to chunky spinners, if you guys are used to spinners that are tapering outwards, you're going to feel really weird to have this in hand, but it just takes a little while, you know, it just takes a little while. Because I'm going to be honest and tell you guys that most of the spinners that I handle usually are kind of like just straightforward or like are tapering outwards, but not anything with such a drastic inward taper like that or what you call a negative taper. This feels a little bit like the triad. Or the Invictus. You know, if you guys have ever held a Triad or Invictus or maybe the Schism or the Psionic, then you guys know. Damn Designs spinners have these, I guess I kind of want to say pointed edges. Yeah, they do have pointed edges, pronounced pointed ends like that, but it's not sharp. Look at that. It's very nicely rounded. So kudos once again to Joshua and Adrian. You guys did a good job on this one. I really, really like it. My sentiments of this has changed. Initially, I was like, mm, it's a cool looking spinner. I did not like the finish here, but now that I've cleaned that up, I'm going to say that I really, really dig this. The buttons, they do go well with the spinner. The dish is not that deep. Some of you might not like it because, you know, right now, a lot of us are kind of used to having buttons that are really, really deep in terms of the dish. But this actually goes pretty well. The spinner itself is not too heavy. Like I mentioned before, the stainless steel version is weighing in at about 70 grams and titanium is weighing in at about 48.3 grams as listed on the website. And so with a weight like that, you don't really need buttons that offer too much grip. You don't need buttons that are overly too grippy unless you really, really like the tactile feedback. But then again, these concentric circles here they do provide a very nice tactile feedback for you you actually feel something here and of course it offers more than enough grip for the spinner itself so all in all i dig the dna splice i think it's a really good job nicely done and for 54 dollars 99 i did not regret this purchase at all i'm really surprised because when i finally saw it in person and then i did this i was like oh look at that design is actually really cool but then it's so fidgetable that it easily just stayed with me all the time i didn't even want to lend it to my friends i just kept it with me all the time at my table in my pocket very simplistic yet there's so much intricate details on this and before i forget to mention i want to say that the buttons actually have two chamfered edges why that's done i have no idea but it goes really well with the spinner so <laughs> i'm not complaining there and last but not least at the start of this video when i did the unboxing i mentioned that joshua included a spare set of 
DNA buttons in this package, right? And then I didn't pay much attention to it besides just saying that, oh, this is like stainless steel. Guess what, guys? It has a unifit system. See that? I did not even take a close enough look to realize. See that washer right there? It's got a unifit system as well. What? Unifit system? DNA buttons? Man. Joshua, you're killing it, man. You're killing it. I'm so sorry, everyone, that I totally missed out on this. Like, I didn't even spot it at all until much later. So anyway, I decided to just edit it in at the end of this video. And that's about it, everyone. Thank you so much for sharing the size of my life. Do I like this spinner? I like it a lot. I really, really enjoyed this more than I expected, way more than I expected. And initially, I was a little bit disappointed because of this. But now that I've gotten rid of it, everything is just fine and dandy. It is great. Is it worth $54.99? In my opinion, yep, solidly made, single solid piece, very, very nice, unique details on it, as expected from Adrian D'Souza of Damn Designs and Joshua of Spinetic Spinners. What more can I say? Links in the video description down below in case you guys are interested in getting one of these. I'm not sure if they are still on sale, but if they are not, I know that pre-orders will be open every once in a while. Make sure you guys check back if you really want to cop yourself one of these. If you are a bar spinner lover, you're gonna enjoy this one. It is a very different experience from most other bars because of that very, very drastic angle on the arms. But it is something that is really enjoyable, really flickable, really fidgetable, and very fun to mess with. I like it. And I'm gonna stop here because if not, I'll just be repeating the same thing over and over again. Thank you so much for sharing in this slice of my life, everyone. And I'll catch y'all in the next one. Until then, Gaga, boost. Pow.